So now let's look at a few cases that highlight a lot of the things we were talking about uh, in terms of the care and options for care for women with metastatic breast cancer. Let's first consider a patient uh, who is ER positive or has ER positive and HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. And so this is a 59-year-old woman uh, who complained of fatigue and breathlessness uh, a few months ago uh, walking upstairs. Uh, about eight years ago, uh, she was diagnosed with a stage 1 ER positive, PR positive, HER2 positive breast cancer. Uh, at the time, uh, she was, this came out right, right, roughly the time uh, where uh, uh, NCTCTG 9831 and B31 came out. So she was treated with adjuvant, uh, adromycin and cytoxin, uh, followed by paclitaxel and trastuzumab. Uh, and uh, she then received an astrazole for five years. Uh, the complaints of fatigue and breathlessness uh, led to a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, uh, which revealed new uh, pulmonary metastases, the largest being about two centimeters, and multiple uh, liver metastases, at least five, the largest being about um, uh, four centimeters. Her liver function tests were normal, uh, and generally, other than the fatigue and breathlessness, uh, she felt fairly well and was still doing most of her uh, activities. Uh, a liver biopsy confirmed that she had uh, estrogen receptor positive uh, breast cancer. Uh, she did have, uh, her cancer was also HER2 positive uh, with a FISH ratio uh, of approximately uh, 2.3. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about FISH ratios in a few minutes as well. Um, and so the question now is, uh, what is the appropriate uh, treatment uh, option for this patient? So I'll ask Sarah to start. Well, when I approach a patient in the frontline setting who has both ER positive and HER2 positive breast cancer, I really look at the disease burden and the symptoms. And initially when I looked at this, I was impressed that she had gone eight years without her disease recurring. And so that sort of slow, indolent process argues for using hormonally targeted therapy in combination with HER2 targeted therapy. On the other hand, we're hearing that she's quite breathless and affected by her symptoms, she's fatigued. And so depending on sort of our need for a response, um, I might choose an approach such as a taxane with pertuzumab and trastuzumab in the frontline setting. Use that for six cycles or until a good response has been rendered and the patient is feeling less symptomatic and then transition to um, just the HER2 targeted agents and maybe add in the endocrine therapy at that point. Any other? Precisely. Uh, precisely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would just add that um, it's, I think it's important to make note that this woman did have a liver biopsy. And on occasion, one is going to see some discordance in receptors. Um, mm -hmm. Edith, I'm More wondering if, ER if, if this patient had a uh, 2 plus liver biopsy by IHC and you sent it off for fish and it was negative, would you still treat her with anti HER2 therapy? Yes. Well, let's, <laughs> no, no, no. Let's, let's push what Andy said a little further because he brought up something that is near and dear to my heart. So what happens if you do a fish ratio on her and the ratio was 1.78? Would you treat this one with her septum? So wait, let me just go back to what Andy said because you said yes. So if you had a patient who, you know, eight, nine years ago had HER2 positive disease. Now, that was somewhere else. They've come to you from somewhere else. They told you they were HER2 positive. And again, the fish then was 2.3. Uh, so, you know, not really high. And you uh, then have a patient whose liver biopsy shows it to be 2 plus but with the fish less than 2. 1.7. You would still treat them as a standard uh, with trastuzumab? Well, so many things to comment on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the idea. That's, that's right, exactly yeah, the yeah, idea, yeah, yeah. to comment on them. Yeah. Yeah. First, uh, well, there are some uh, phrases here that the fish, if a fish was 2.3, that's not very high. Not really high, but that's high. And one of the things we've, we've uh, shown, certainly in N9831, is that the degree of HER2 amplification does not correlate with increased benefit to, to trastuzumab. So patients who had a, a fish ratio of two or had a fish ratio of five had similar benefit from trastuzumab. Uh, so uh, 2.3 is certainly positive. Uh, we would all treat for that in the yeah, adjuvant we'll, setting, we'll absolutely. That's right, yeah. Well, we're so, all gonna, we want to talk about this. This is an interesting, and even in the metastatic setting. Go ex exactly. Ahead. Yes. So uh, what we have also found is that there is true tumor heterogeneity in the setting of her 2 positive disease. And that heterogeneity has been a little bit difficult to quantify in terms of whether it's 5%, 10%. And the reason for that is that there's not a uniform definition that globally is accepted for what heterogeneity really means. 
but based on the way we at Mayo define heterogeneity, we see it in about 10% of the cases. That means that if we take a tumor, a portion can be negative, and if we do it again, the 10% of the times, it's going to be positive. And we published that very recently, actually, in Breast Cancer Research and Treatment in 2013. So what happens in the metastatic setting, uh, where you have a, a primary that is positive and the metastatic that is negative, it may be that the portion that was biopsied was actually not representative of the entire tumor. And that is an issue. So there are two factors that can be done. Number one, do dual testing. As you will see, we will be recommending more and more. So if you do an initial biopsy on a patient for her to, and it's the, the negative, then you should consider doing the second type of test. Second type being an IHC instead of a fish? So, or so if, if you start with IHC and okay. it's negative and for you to do fish, okay. and this is being considered as part of the updated ASCOCAP guidelines. Right, which we'll talk uh, about in a minute as well. Uh, that's uh -huh. right, yes. Okay. And the other issue is, uh, is that one biopsy representative of a tumor that would uh, allow you to be confident to withhold potentially life-saving therapy with targeted drug with, to a patient? And that's the main issue here. Well, so would you go back and, because, you know, I have seen these cases sometimes where a patient has, you know, what people thought was HER2 positive in the adjuvant yes. setting, and then, you know, you, they get treated in the metastatic setting for HER2 positive disease until they get biopsied for some study, you know, and then they turn out to be HER2 negative and then over and over again on biopsy. So these are patients. But it depends on your definition of negative. That's well, the they are really though. negative by all definitions. Like, I mean, 1.2 and, you know, 2 plus 1.2, it's hard to know. Well, we'll get to that but, in a minute. So okay. then, uh, and no, no high copy number. You know everything That's what you I was think about. about. To get to. Right. So the, uh, you know, I've had a, like a continuous email conversation with Edith about copy number, but the as um, you should, I think copy number is very didn't really important. come to an end either. But copy number the, is extremely important. The thing is that sometimes if you go back and retest the primary sample, your testing doesn't turn out to be HER2 positive. Now that could still be heterogeneity. Yeah. On the other hand, you don't want to give these people trastuzumab for life who don't really have HER2 positive disease. So it's a little bit of a quandary. I totally agree with you. So maybe a scenario in which patient has truly indolent disease, you know, eight years later, but the patient has minimal disease, not like this patient who has really dyspnea. Right. And in that particular case, you know, you could consider using uh, a hormonal agent alone to begin with and see how the patient does in the first few months. So Joyce, do you use HER2 yeah. copy number or ratio? I look, I, I insist that I get, you know, you have to, because outside labs don't always do it, but you have to get the uh, HER2, average HER2 gene copy number. You have to, and Edith can expand because I know the ASCO guidelines, the new ones, but we have to because above six, you know, the ASCO guidelines today say that that's a positive test today. So, um, and then, so yeah, you, you really, you really do, but it still is a, um, a quandary because sometimes they're disparate. You'll have the ratio being 1.5. And you'll have the uh, average HER2 gene copies being five-ish. You know, it's right in. You know, well, but that's but the reason for that probably is because you get coamplification of the centromere correct. of chromosome 17. Correct. Well, so you're we, getting like six you, copies of chromosome 17 and six of HER2. Right. That's a ratio of one. Correct. And right. so we should be should we ignore the the ratio and just go strictly by the uh, HER2 gene copy if it's you know above f four to six it's equivocal you know but is that. So, you know, this is where we email Edith, you know, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other comments from anybody? Mm, no. Andy's? No, no, no. Andy's? Not on this.